On this week's show, should I rent or buy where I live? In the news, new website helping renters fight rogue landlords. And we're going to be answering all your property-related questions. Welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an upload. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Enjoy this week's show and don't forget to share it with all your friends. Hi, I'm Russell Leeds. I'm Alistair Cunningham. And welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. Um, we, we, this is, we're actually going to be talking, we, we answered a question about this the other day and we were like, uh, yeah. we, you know, it's such a, such a good topic that we could explore and hopefully give people a lot of, a lot of information in. And, and also, I do think it depends a little bit on what type of house you want to live in. Yeah. So there's a bit more to it that we can go into, but it's a great topic because <clears throat> so many people, um, so many people are confused by this. They just totally don't understand why on earth would a property investor <laughs> yeah, I know. not own yeah. The house that they live in. Yeah, it's it's serious. That every event I've been since, I've had at least five people come up to me and say they can't get their head round why you would uh, not buy your yeah your, it doesn't make sense your property and why you'd rent it. Uh, so we're going to talk about that, which is pretty cool. And by the end of the show, you will know whether or not you should buy or whether you should rent your own house. Yep, absolutely. Uh, um, so yeah, it's going to be a good show. How, how have you been this week? I've been really good. Um, we just come off the back of. Three, two crash courses. So we had crash course last week and straight again this week. Um, we've got deal finding extravaganza this week. Um, so literally got a couple of days of in the office and then back on it. But yeah, it was really good. Crash course was phenomenal at the weekend. Uh, it was in uh, Birmingham. It was, wasn't it? It was in Birmingham City Centre. Oh, to be fair, I didn't go. Oh, no, yeah, no. Nah, so I don't know. It was just me and Samuel, this one. Um, but yeah, it was very good. Uh, really, really good crowd. Really good crowd. They, they were very, very energetic. They played full out. Um, they were doing lots of good stuff. Nice, man. Nice, Really man. nice room. Yeah, it was all good. And what, all good. have you done anything interesting in your personal life? Got a puncture on my car. Ooh. Brand so new no, Porsche. No, then. Brand new Porsche. Got a puncture. It keeps going down. Um, so I need to take that into the ga- into back to Porsche. Porsche. It's not Porsche. It's Porsche. Back to Porsche tomorrow. And they're going to um, sort that out for me. Um, but that's really about it. So you've just driven around getting punches. Yeah, pretty nice much, man. It sounds, sounds like you've had a fantastic week. Um, because obviously I'm, we're in London now. I don't. I'm not using the car as much as I I, uh, I was. So it stays in the car park. Um, getting punches. It, well, uh, it was in the car park for like four days, not being moved. Because I, I in my apartment I've got an underground car park, so it stays in there, not being moved. And I went back, and it's got a pretty flat tire. And I'm like, oh, great. So I don't know how to fix that. But anyway, we'll get that sorted. Um, but yeah, no, it's been pretty pretty cool all, all on that. What about yourself? So I went to uh, Kew Gardens. Cool. On Saturday. Nice. nice. It's nice. It's really nice, isn't it? It's nice. Well, I very very nearly moved to Kew. Ah. And then I went and then I went round it a bit. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? I made such the right decision moving to Beaconsfield. All oh, right. Why? Yeah, it was just better. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, just, just I mean, Kew Gardens is very nice. But. Do you know where else is nice in London? Regent's Park, right? If you go into Regent's Park, there's a inside. There's like a an, a whole area of just flowers and just like um like really nice flowers. I've, I went. I saw, I saw them. Yeah, yeah. It's really really nice. It's really in good. There. Really nice. You would never expect that. In it's the quite a nice London. park as well. What it's I like being in the woods. It's like there's walkways and what? trees. It's just lovely in the middle of London. Crazy. It, it is, and it's not touristy though, is it? No. When I went, it's just like sort of local yeah. people, and it's very, very chill. Our office is like a stone's throw from Regent's Park, oh. which is great. So yeah, awesome, man. Well, I'm glad you had a good week. Right, let's get let's get delving into this then. So, um, do you should you buy or should you rent? First of all, let's have a look at the advantages for for buy, buying so most people i mean i found this when i was when i was looking for a house here and i was i was looking at letting agents and i'd say to them oh they'd say well oh, so what is it you do I'd yeah. say, i run a training business mm-hmm. that primarily teaches people to invest in property and that they that they would like look at me like <laughs> and you're looking to rent yeah oh, yeah i'm looking to rent and they're they're confused so well first of all why would people assume or do we even need to say this i don't know but why would people assume as a property investor, you should buy where you live. Um, I don't know. I don't know why they do that. I don't know why, but it is. It's a common thing. I get it a lot. I get it at every event. I get many people messaging me. Why do we rent and not own? Um, the reality is, it's because your home is not generally seen as an investment. Um, it is probably overall in the sense of you will benefit from capital appreciation and things like that. But 
if so on, you, the face, on the face of it, though, it sounds stupid because you could either rent a house yeah. and therefore you're paying dead money to a landlord who's making money from yeah. you. Or if you could, like, you're, the, you're almost the perfect tenant for yourself. Because, Absolutely. So, or you can just buy it and then you're, yeah. you're gaining capital appreciation. So why would, why would someone who makes their living from owning houses not own their own house? It's crazy. Okay, so I personally would, would say, look, let's just look at it easily, okay? £200,000 house, if you want to buy that, you're going to have to put... Don't go through the maths with me, because that's what we're going to do in a minute. You tell, right, fine. You tell me why. Why what? Why? Well, well, it, doesn't make, it, it sounds like it doesn't make sense, doesn't it? It does, yeah. And that's why a lot of people are confused by it, because that's your business. But you're going to be living there. Um, so I would rather invest in properties that make more, and I would rather have more properties. So, but I, I, I can't answer the question... Because to me, it's logical. So I can't answer the question to why it's not logical to other people that aren't okay. clear okay. on it. All right. Maybe we can clarify that. Maybe we can help clarify it to me. Because to me, it's completely logical that you do not buy where you live if you're going to invest in property. All right. Let's have an argument then. I'll argue that it's, it's, it's nonsense. See if you can beat me. No, I agree with you. It's nonsense. No, no. no I'll, be, I'll, I'll have, take the rubbish argument. All right. Go on then. I'll take, the, I'll take the argument that you should. Okay. So you, of course, should buy your own house. Yes. Because if you're uh, where you live, of yeah. course you should. No. Yeah, yeah, you should. Okay. Right. Because you're going to be living in it. Now, what, what, when, when a landlord buys a house, what's the biggest fear? Tenants trashing it. Yep. Yeah. Or? No tenants. Or no tenants. Yeah. Right. So if you buy your own house, you know that you're going to pay the mortgage off. Yeah. Yeah, you just are. Yep. And when you pay that mortgage off, you're buying an asset. Mm-hmm. So why would you why would you not buy an asset? Why would you pay someone else to buy an asset? Because as a landlord, if you own a property, the tenant pays the mortgage off, don't they? Yeah. So why would you pay for someone else's house when you could buy your own house? It doesn't make any sense. Because you could use the money that you would put as deposits into multiple income streams. And as long as you're buying the right house in the right area, then you wouldn't have that problem. Like, okay, there's... there's but there's, you always could have voids. Yeah, but you could have voids. You, you could... You put, we, we, when we do our maths, we put money aside for voids. If I'm living there, I don't have, put money aside for voids. We have contingencies. Yeah. However, right, people talk about voids like they're happening all the time. It's a small scale, come on. It's not... Most landlords have proper tenants. Most landlords don't have problems with rents. But you only ever hear of the bad ones. Cause, okay. So like, if you take all these, these TV programs like Rogue Landlords and, and Rogue Tenants, they're not going to put on a TV program great tenants and great landlords, are they? No. Because it doesn't sell TV. But listen, so, I agree, I agree, right? It's small. But you've got a small amount of voids. Yeah. You've got a small amount of management fee. Yeah. You've got a small amount of maintenance, mm-hmm. extra maintenance of people trashing it. Small, small, small. But it adds up compared to you living in there where there's none. Yeah, but then you have one house. Yeah, but you could buy. You could still buy multiple houses. And then you could buy more if you didn't. If you rented your own house. Yeah, but no. Well, why? Okay. Because let's well, say I had lots of different rental properties. Why can't I just live in one of them? Well. well it depends what mortgage it's on for a start, because if it's a bad let mortgage, you're not yeah, allowed to. But, but, but it, well, exactly. Even more point now, because if I'm going to buy my own house, I only have to put down 10%. Yeah, so, okay, 10%. So, uh, let's just see, what's the average house price in London? Well, London's a bad example, because London's different Birmingham. anywhere at Birmingham. 300 grand? For a, a four-bedroomed house, four, 300 grand. Yeah. So, if you get a 90% LTV... Um, for the mortgage, you're still going to have to put 30 k 300 grand, yeah. To so you're going to put 30 k down, plus fees, 36, maybe 38 k But now I'm buying an asset that's worth 400 grand. Yes. Or why don't you rent, because it's going to be about the same as a mortgage, because we've had this discussion before. Mm-hmm. We'll go into the calculations in a little while. And then you could buy another, use that money you're going to put as a deposit and buy two rental properties. And then you get in that income as well. But I couldn't buy two rental properties for 30 grand. You could. could. Not in Birmingham, but, yeah, but, you, oh, but you definitely could. But then, that, but then why are we talking about, why are we comparing Birmingham with somewhere else? We have to no, compare Birmingham with Birmingham. No, but what I mean is you can invest that money into rental properties elsewhere. Like, so we don't, we talk about um, buying properties wherever there's cash flow, good cash flow. And so you could literally put 15 grand or 20 grand or whatever into a, a 60, 70,000 pound house as a HMO or as a single let and get good cash flow every month. 
So the deposit money could go into investing into other, other areas, and then you've got capital appreciation across all three. Now, granted, capital appreciation might not be as good in these cheaper areas as it would be in, say, Birmingham. And I'm going to get crap tenants, I'm going to avoid. You maybe, da-da-da. maybe, but then if you do it all properly and you do the due diligence correctly and you get the right management company and you just do it and treat it as a business, then you limit that. You're always going to have risk in everything. But why can't, everything. Like, like for me, in business, I'm a both man. I'm not like an mm. and or an or. So why would I not want rental properties and my own house? Why would I want to just have rental properties when I could be making money on my own house as well? You've brought this point up before. The reason why you rent is because you like flexibility. Now, four months ago... Oh, by the way, just to be totally clear, I totally don't agree with everything I'm saying. I'm just arguing <laughs> I know the you point. Don't. I know right. you don't. You've just been argumentative, as always. Um, so four months ago, we had no plan... Uh, no, maybe five months ago, we were not even contemplating moving to London. And you just moved into a new house. And you were like a month into its tenancy. So, like, we're now moving to London... Um, completely out of the blue. It's, we talked about it a year ago or whatever, but it was, it was yeah, in the future we'll move to London. Um, but then five months ago, we said, that's it, we're moving to London next month. Um, and then suddenly, so you got the flexibility, you can get out of that tendency. If you owned that mm-hmm. house, you would then have to either move house, sell it and move house, or you could lend rent it out. True. Uh, change your mortgage on it. So the flexibility that comes um, as, as an entrepreneur in your house. Now, I personally, would, I would buy my own home eventually when like when you've got enough assets that are providing the income to pay for that so and I'm, I'm talking about when you've got more money in the bank than you know what to do with and you've invested you've got a large investment portfolio a varied investment portfolio as well not just necessarily property but different types of property so if you've got a varied portfolio then you'd buy your house i i personally would do that Right. Um, but cool. not, not But you yet. can see th- this is kind of the normal argument yeah, that, is, that, yeah. that people kind of have. Yeah, this is kind of the normal argument. So there's, there's pros, pros and cons, cons for everything. There's, there's pro- um, but I don't. But I, I think I believe it's actually pretty clear cut. Okay. It, and I think it's, that it's renting is clearly better. But we'll go through the figures and we'll have a look. I think it might the, depend. The figures on the, help. The figure. Well, at the, the figures end of the day, right? Written down are massively. It, it, you, people see. It's, it, we've done this with the, the apartment I'm I'm living in. Um, the mortgage would be very similar to the rental figure, so you wouldn't, yeah. So we'll, we'll go through the figures in a minute. We'll go through the figures. Let's have a look at the pro. Let's have a look at the pros and cons first, so people can. Because for example, I like, I like your point about flexibility. That is a very, very good pro. Yeah. However, some people, that might be a good thing. Some but, people, they might not care. Right? Would you agree? Yes, some people wouldn't. But do you know that the thing is right? No matter what we say, people will disagree with it because they'll have their version and their opinions on things. But that's what this is about. It's have, have your opinion, go whatever you feel. But let's look at the numbers and the logic of it as an investor. Yeah. Because that's what we're doing, yeah? Yeah, okay. So let's have a look at the pros and cons. So um, I'll try and hold this so I'm still uh, leaning into the mic. So number one, you've got flexibility if you rent. Now that for me is quite important. Yeah. Because... <laughs> I like to be able to have. I like to be able to try different houses. I like to be able to decide what I like. I went through a phase of wanting to live in really old houses. Yeah. Now I want to live in a modern house. Well, and you can have the variety. Flexibility. I'm going to also put variety because it might not necessarily be about flexibility, but you want that variety. You've got a lot more options if you rent than if you buy. Prime example: uh, you were going to look at moving to Kew Garden. Yeah. And say you'd moved to Kew Gardens and you realised actually it's not really what you wanted, you could have moved there and moved again. Yeah. Because you've already said that you're glad you didn't move there and you went to Beacons- Beaconsfield. Beaconsfield? Beacon. Beaconsfield. It's spelt Beacon. How is it? Okay. It's weird. Cool. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's your first advantage, right? Second one. Now, this is a big one for me. Go on. Right, a big one for me. When you're buying an investment property, what is your primary, primary purpose of buying that investment property? It rents out and gets tenants. As well, in, well, yes. Okay, the, What's the end goal? End goal is it's a good investment. Good investment. Yeah, it's, it's, a good it's, investment. it's, it's, it's an ROI. That's your goal, right? Yeah, return on investment, cash flow, capital However, if you're buying to live in, yeah. what's, what, what's, your, what's your end goal? Home. You want, you you want, want something you like, you right? You want something you like, could be near, school, near schools for the family, whatever. Yeah, so, it's, a, it's a home, isn't it? It's not, it's not an investment. So we say that when you invest, buy any property, it should be formulas, mm-hmm. not... Feelings. Feelings, yeah. If you're buying to live in, mm-hmm. it's feelings. Yeah. It, of course it is. 
Of course it is. Because you're emotionally attached. You like the area, you like the street. I'm just wondering if when you and Anna went to look at um, sort of the house in Beaconsfield, you went in and you, you started walking out the ROI, did you? No. No, you don't. You go in and you go, oh, that's nice. I go in, I go, how close to the school? What school yeah. is it clear? It's by this school. What's the street like? Mm. What's the garden like? What does it look like from the outside? Yeah. Does it have big gates? I want big gates. Does it, do you know what I mean? It's very... Big, what's big gates? I, I did. I wanted big gates. Is that, your, is that for your ego to get yeah. in? <laughs> <laughs> it's not for my ego. It's just I've always, I've always wanted a house yeah, with big yeah, gates. Big and gates, I've, yeah. never had, I've never had a house with big gates. <laughs> yeah. I wanted big gates. You need big doors as well. It, is a bit, it, is got, it has got big doors. <laughs> it has got big doors. So, but, but it's so important that you kind of get this yeah, as a property so. investor because... You are buying with feelings when it's your own home, which yeah, means agree with you. that you're going to buy a house that's probably a bad return on investment, mm -hmm. or you'll buy your formulas and you won't be happy with the house because you're living somewhere that yeah. you don't want to live. You, you can't have both. No, I, I do agree with you. Um, I, I know people that have um, bought houses as their homes and then for whatever reason had to move very quickly, separations, divorces, um, work, whatever, and then they go to rent that property out and it barely covers its costs. It barely, I, I know a, a, a family up in where I used to live that moved to Australia for work and they're renting their house out at a loss. It's costing them like 150 pound a month because the mortgage payments and things like that and they can't get enough rent for it. And that was a terrible return, that's a terrible investment. Yeah. But they, they think it's an amazing investment because somebody's in there and I'm like, yeah, do you know you're losing like 120 pound a month or whatever? Yeah. Mm. And then kind of linked to this, but th now this is where it could vary from house to house <coughs> for people, right? But kind of linked to this, number one, or A, the, the houses, the nice houses make bad ROI, yeah. typically. But, and now this, this is, this is the, re the really kind of, the really important bit. People say that rent is dead money, mm -hmm. right? Rent, debt money, debt money. <clears throat> so is interest. Interest, yes. And the interest on a nice house is normally about the same. Yeah. That's the rent. It is. So it actually makes very very little difference apart from you putting all your money into a crap into not into a house that you wouldn't want to live in so for the, for the, the yeah that you want to live in so for me for that reason alone it can it kind of makes sense to rent where you personally live but the only way of really working at it is going through the figures yeah absolutely let's, should we right. do some so let's do some figures so we've done this before we have like we however have. people moaned because we put 25% um, we put down 25% Deposit, so we'll say ten for for a first time buyer. Okay. All right. So can, this, can are ten percent more uh, ten percent deposits actually viable in today's market? Is the mortgage lenders doing that for a first time buyer? For a first time buyer. What what do you, what do you think is realistic then? I think realistic is more like fifteen percent because the okay you've got all these government incentives where you can put down five percent. But personally, I I would always say if the government's offering you anything, don't take it because there's a hidden agenda. Um, so all these 5% shared ownerships, I wouldn't even touch my barge pole. Um, I'm sure they serve a purpose, but I know many of horror, I've heard many horror stories about it. Um, so I would say, I mean, let's just quickly Google it. Um, first time, first time buyer. So while we're doing this, what house are we going to use? We're going to use a... Let's we'll just, start with your house. Okay. And then we'll, and then we'll do a, a cheaper house. First time buy a mortgage rate. Let's just go with what Google says, yeah? And we'll use that yeah. as interest rate. Um, boom, boom, boom. Otherwise, we'll get people moaning at us. Okay, so it's maximum 90%. Yeah, so I'm saying. 10% so 10, 10 is that fairly accurate? I think you can get 10%. Some, okay, let's just go with 10%. Then. I haven't been there a first some... time buyer for a long time, so <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard to judge. But we'll go 10%. Right. So your house, how much is it worth? The flat I'm in, yeah. seven hundred. According to according to Zoopla Mouse Price, seven hundred and seventy-five thousand. Seven seven five. Cool. So your ten percent 
Uh, deposit would be... 77500 So we've got an outstanding mortgage now of 697500 So what are, we, what are we talking about for interest payments? Well, I've just done a very quick uh, search on Google and for, for first-time buyers um, on repayment mortgages, the, the, the comparison rate is 4%. Yeah, that's about right. Um, so initially, it's like 2.99, but then it drops up to 4%. So let's just go 4%. Let's be super, super conservative. Which makes an annual payment in interest, uh, an annual payment of twenty seven thousand nine hundred. But that's just purely in interest, yeah. That's the interest payments, yeah. Out every year, which is what per month. Uh, divide that per month, and that's so just over two grand. Two three two five. Two three two. And this is just this is just off HSBC's website. Cool, right? So so let's so your apartment. If you bought it, now obviously your mortgage payments would be more because you'd also be paying it off. But yep. what we're comparing right now is the interest that you're paying. Mm-hmm. Versus versus the rent, mm-hmm. right? So per month, two three. What, what's your what's your rent? Nine. Uh, my, my rent is four four eight times four point three three is nineteen oh five. Right. So you're actually making a saving just on interest of like four hundred and twenty quid. Four hundred and twenty quid. Yeah. A month. So week's rent. My rent is four hundred and forty a yeah. week. So, so, you, so you're saving a load of money in rent and you're not having to put down a massive deposit of 70. So what would your return on investment on this be? It would be... Okay. So if you were to buy this as an investment property, um, without... It depends what you're going to... Okay, so as a... Okay, I'll hang about. You'd make a loss. I th- yeah, I don't think it's going to be fantastic. It was going to make a <coughs> loss, isn't it? <coughs> because your, great, you, is your it? mortgage is going to be nowhere near covered by the rent. Well, yeah, of course you are. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Rent per month. Yeah, yeah. Your mortgage. Your, so you're making a loss on it. Obviously, so if if you had it on a if it was an investment, probably you'd have it on a slightly better interest rate, be on three percent. So it'd be slightly better. So you you probably you you ain't gonna be make, making much money at all. Um, and it, it's interesting because like, what could you do with seventy seven and a half thousand pound? You could buy. You could buy two houses with that easy. You three make houses. Twenty percent off it. Yeah. And then you could rent somewhere like this. It's not even like people say this is dead money. But so is that. Yeah. So the rent's dead money, but it's not dead money because you've got to live somewhere. Yeah. There's costs involved in owning it's a, a cost, house, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and the thing is, like, just just realistically, let's, let's think about how you can invest that 77 grand. Right. You could buy like a HMO, obviously not as a first time buyer, but as a if you're if you're if you've got a few houses or whatever, you could buy a HMO. You could buy a couple of single lets. You could do a couple of buy refurb refinance deals and pull all your money out, and you could get you could actually. Um, yeah. You could create quite a bit of income from that seventy-seven grand if you knew what you're doing. So on a nice house, yeah, on a nice house, <coughs> seven hundred seventy-five grand house, it is insane to, to buy. buy. Yeah, insane. And only you said at the beginning of the conversation, uh, when I've got, I wouldn't. I don't know if I more investment properties. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about when like you you get to the point in your life where you you're starting to chill out a little bit and relax and like you've already seen. Come you've on, got, we're never gonna get there. No, I know, but if if people are doing and you you want to buy that nice house out in the middle of nowhere with a swimming pool and all, so I don't know. Maybe some people have dreams. Maybe that's their aspiration. Like I've always wanted to own a really really nice house. Okay. Um, that's just a, a sick. I always wanted to own a Porsche and I now got it. So a, a long term goal for me is I want to have like a massive house. Fair enough. Yeah, but um, do you want, why 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 do you want to? Why do you want to own it though? Why, it's still your home. If you Very rent good it. point. Um, uh, my mindset has been changed over the last year or two, but I You've don't still know. Still got a little bit of the old mindset yeah, left. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's do it on a more compact. Like seven hundred and seventy-five thousand pound is not really um, a normal house. A normal everyday house for the everyday person that's watching this. So let, let's. Should we say? Should we go low end? Should this we is two hundred and fifty. I think that's low end. Should we start low and then we'll do somewhere in the middle? See how it works. Because the the higher okay. you get, the better it is. Of course it is. Yeah. So the nicer the house, the the, the more beneficial it is to rent. So let's pick somewhere that say, mate, two hundred grand. Yeah, two hundred grand. So let's go north of England. I mean, for two hundred grand, you could get like a mansion in certain parts. Or well, should we go less? Yeah, I would. Should we go a hundred? Hundred and fifty, actually. I would because hundred. Let's do one fifty. One fifty. All right. So let's say someone's buying a house, just a nice normal house, hundred and fifty yep. grand. Right, so you've got your mortgage. Okay. We're going to say four percent, yeah. We're going to go with four percent again. That's six thousand a year. Six thousand. Oops, what am I doing? Yep, six thousand a year. Uh, so that's five hundred a month. So that's five hundred per month in interest. Is that interest? 
Interest only, yeah. That was on HSBC's site, yeah. In interest, yeah. Well, you can't do interest on the, on residential. No, no, what I'm saying is that's the interest. The 500 is the interest. The mortgage will be more. Yeah. yeah. So uh, 500 pound a month. Now here's the question, big question: What would the rental be on 150,000 pound property? Uh, yeah, you depending on where it is, but you I would say up there you're 600, 650. It's just 150k house depends how you'd split it up. If it's like, single would, lay, what would your what would your deposit be? Okay, deposit on our 115 15k. 15k, yeah. 15k. So, so was your, did you work that £6,000 on based on the 150 no, or no, the 135? No, no, scrub that, scrub that, scrub that. 135, 0.04, 5,400, divided by 12 is 450. 450, okay, in interest every month. Yep. So your rental, you're probably looking... Probably about six hundred to be yeah, fair. Yeah, six hundred, six fifty. So you make me make, make a couple hundred pound a month. Six hundred in rent. So that's your dead money. So for so so you're looking at maybe, I reckon one hundred and fifty pound a month, something like that. Yeah. You've got to put down fifteen grand. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I'd be like, mm, I could kind of swing both ways. Apart from number two. Formula's not feelings, okay, why? Because, because, Explain. Because if, if you buy this, right, so it's the equivalent of you making about 150 quid a month. Yeah. Because it's saving you about 150 quid. Yeah. Really. Okay. And that's that's all it's got going for it, isn't it, really? That's all it's got going for it, but what could you do with that 15 grand? Well, that's what I'm saying. You could do a lot more than that, couldn't you? You could make a lot more with 15 grand. If you buy the right investment property, a lot more. You could make a lot more than 15. Um, God, jeez, I know... Um, I know investors that have bought HMOs, like up and running HMOs, like for 150 grand. No, no, not for 150 grand, but for like 60k. And I, I know somebody that bought an up and running HMO for like 54,000 pound. Not, a, it's not a big HMO. It's more of a multi let so it's a four bed HMO in Liverpool. It was like 56k it makes, like, it's not mad. It's not making loads of rent, but it's making like about just over a thousand pound a month in rent. So he'll be, he's clearing at least 500 a month profit. After mm. all his bills and that. And that's from like a 60, uh, like so, 50, 60 key. But, but, but you're going to be buying something that you probably won't want to live in forever. Yeah. Because you're not going to, you're not. not you're, gonna, you're buying a low end house. Yeah. Yeah. And you're making, it kind of works out about the same. You'd be better off investing that. Yeah. And, re and renting somewhere you want to live. Yeah, I, I must admit, because like, um, we all okay. It's a good first time home and at 150k, but you're not. Let's face it. The reality is, you're all. Everyone wants to progress, don't they? So what about let's do it for a like a 300 grand home? Well, the, a 300 grand one is going to be in the face. This bet that but double, isn't it? This really is kind thing? of like. Mm. The thing is, it's not going to be double. I say it's going to be double. It's not because just because the house is 300 thousand pound doesn't mean the rent's going to be double. No. Um, the rent might be maybe 850. Yeah. Um, but the mortgage, yeah. So I. I the, the more we do numbers, the more we talk about the it. Higher the, the higher this number goes, the worse it is. Now, if let's say, for example, you wanted to buy a house, you wanted to turn it into rooms like a HMO, and you wanted to live in one of the rooms because mm -hmm. you were single and you were young and you didn't care, then I'd go, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Because that, that, you're buying it with your formulas and you don't give a crap. You're happy, yeah, to, live, yeah. you're happy to live in it and then you're going to move out and buy it, go somewhere else. In essence, you're almost renting it off yourself because you're buying an investment property. Yeah. So okay. in that situation, yeah, okay. I know I, someone does it. <laughs> I yeah. know someone that's got two HMOs and he lives in one of the rooms. Yeah, so fair enough. So it depends on your situation. Mm -hmm. But personally, I think you should be <coughs> aspiring to. Rent where you live. Yeah. You should be renting where you live. You should be using your money to buy investment properties. Yeah. We're investors at the end of the day. So um, every the money you have, any savings you have, you should really be investing it as opposed to... Yeah. Um, now, people... I know what's happening, right? I know what will happen. People will have the argument, well, your residential property is a long-term investment because it will go up in capital appreciation, things like that. So, And there'll be many, many people that say, well, actually, I bought a house and this 10 years ago and I've sold it recently and made like 200 grand so it is an investment because they've made money out of it what would, you answer, what would your answer be to that? I'd say yeah great but any property you bought would do the same hmm. so then they would like I would say to you well then that, that, that Listen, puts your whole argument no, of it doesn't. it's not an investment it out, out of the water because yeah, because I, I don't say it's not an investment okay what did you say then? I said it's not a good investment. Okay. But it You've clearly got, has. It made him, it made him 100,000 yeah, pounds. Yeah, great. Or well done. 
well well done him. There's th- there's th- but there's there's three levels, and do not confuse me. Here you go. So the best is you buy mm-hmm. investment properties. That is the best. Second best is you buy your own house. And that's good. Yeah. And the third best is you buy nothing. That's, not that's the, the best, worst. That's the worst, isn't it? What? Best case, worst case, yeah. So the best is that you buy investment properties that give you a good <coughs> ROI. The yeah. worst case is at least you buy something. If you're going to live in it, but at least you're on the ladder. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can appreciate that. Yeah, he made 100 grand. Well done him. Houses all go up. Yeah, so, yeah, generally, it is, yeah. yeah. Good, well done. You bought it. I would, I would never say this to someone, by the way. Who's like, oh, I'm just saying, I've bought my first house. I'll never go, huh, idiot, you should rent it. <laughs> well done, them. Yeah. They've yeah, bought yeah, a house. Yeah. Well done. If there's anyone watching this that's gone and bought a house, is now thinking, oh, have I screwed up? No, you haven't screwed up. It was You've still, still bought a yeah. house. It's still going to go up. It's still an asset. Well done for getting on the ladder. Well, right? I would, I would um, see, I would argue that it's an asset. It's an asset. No, 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 no. I would argue your home is not an asset, it's a liability. It's both. All right, Robert Kiyosaki says your home is an a- is clearly a liability. It's not an asset. Well, you own it and it's going up in value. Yeah, this is the argument. This this is the argument because it, yes, I agree with you in one instance. It is an asset in the sense it is going up in value. Over time, you will make profit. But when you calculate all the costs that you're having to pay out every month, interest, utilities, all that sort of stuff. Now I know you will still have utilities with rental, but let's just say this probably all the costs that come out of that house. And then if you weigh that up over the, the actual profit you're making after 10 years, is the profit still? Look at the interest. How much interest, if you add all that interest I up understand over a period what, of I time. understand but what he's saying. Robert Kiyosaki is very, very clear on assets and liabilities. An asset is something that puts money in your pocket every month. A liability is something that takes money. Um, so your home takes money out of you, so it cannot be defined as an asset. But it depends how you look at it. So for example, right, let's say you bought a Ferrari. With an accountant. Let's, let's say you bought a Ferrari. Yeah. And you rented it out for £100 a month. That's okay. putting pocket in your money every. That's putting money in your back pocket every month. But yeah. is that an asset if it's depreciating more than hundred pound a month? I would say so no. You, well, you, well, it is okay. called Robert the, Kiyosaki because it puts money in your pocket. That's a good argument. I can't got nothing to say to that. It's a good argument. Okay. You've got to look at my both. argument here. Though. You've got to look at appreciation stroke depreciation. Yeah. And cash flow. Yeah, profit and non-profit. Now, for me, <coughs> buying your own house over buying nothing. Mm-hmm. It is it's an better. asset. Yeah, yeah, I agree with going you. Bit, you've I got don't the disagree with you, by the way. Anyway. I agree with you. But I understand what he's saying. Yeah. I do understand okay, what he's I, saying. Ask yourself this. I think he's saying would, it to be controversial. So yeah, maybe, maybe. Would an accountant, when he's done your year-end accounts, would your home be on your assets list? If your business owned it? If you own, no, no. If you, your personal accounts, whatever. If you buy have houses in your they, personal They'd say it was an asset, yeah. Would they? Would they really? I don't think for one minute they would. Any problem, well, I don't know, because I... I, I but what I do I know is my know, accountant. Maybe. Any properties that we buy goes on our. It goes on our. Yeah, but they're going through a business. That's different. You, then you, you're, that's not your home, is it? That's your business investments. So when you're, if you're self-employed and, and you're doing your year-end accounts, would your personal home be down as an asset or a liability, or not even on there at all? So what? So what? So what you're saying an asset is? No, no, an asset. I agree. I agree. The asset is something that puts money in your pocket. So I, I, I agree with you. It is an asset over time. But there's so many people out there say it's not an asset because it takes loads of money out of your pocket. Oh, I get that. Like, and particularly interest. Particularly, and this is interest-free. If it's interest-free, then I don't you know. You just buy it for cash. Ca- cash or interest-free. Well, it's not going to happen, is it? Well, but if you buy it for cash, <coughs> we could do it. If you bought a 40 grand house that you lived in for cash, is that an asset? Interesting. Probably, yeah. Because it's not putting money in your back pocket not, every month. It's not putting money in your back pocket every month. It's still an asset because it's not, whether you rent or own, yeah, you're still going to have utilities. You're still going to have that. that, So that's the relevant, that's a cost. But if you buy the house outright, I would argue you could probably better spend that £40,000, but it's probably a better asset than having it on a mortgage, I would say. Is cash in the bank an asset? No. Gives you interest, pays, puts money in your back pocket every month. Does it? Not point, not, okay, yeah, fine, not point, not, not, oh, come on, it's not that bad. What, how bad is it then? Not point eight or something, you, not point one zero eight or something like that. You doesn't even have to start with a naught. You can get savings accounts that give you like one and a half percent. Actually, interesting, we've done a podcast and there was that um, new, in, that savings account, it was like four and a half percent. Yeah. Maybe that was like six months ago. Yeah, it may be in America, not point, not, not, not one percent, but over but here. it's not, okay, there, if you then, then, this is a whole other discussion, cash in the bank is actually shrinking. Is it actually going up? And, and the true, let's get, 
back to the true Here you nuts go. and bolts of it. Is thing. it going up? No, it's not. We it's can depreciating. argue it is going up. Of course, it's going up. What cash in the bank? Yeah. Not with the true value of the pound. No. So when you take into the true value of living costs and the pound, it's not going to be shrinking. But I do think it's interesting that when the we bank will make you believe it's going up, and the media will make you believe it's going up. That's why they want people to do it. Because well, why do the bank want you to have money in the bank? Listen, I'm not saying you should put money. I, I think we're I think we're arguing about definitions here rather yeah, yeah, than yeah. the principles of it. Okay. So we're arguing about whether what's an asset, what's liability. Um, Look, we both know that put, sticking money in the bank and letting it grow isn't a good investment. No, I agree yeah. with you. It's not. We also both know that the best investment, and I hope you guys watching at home, because I want to wrap this up now, because I feel like we've been talking about this for quite a while, but um, I, think, I, think we, I think everyone hopefully should know that the best thing to buy is investment properties yeah, I agree with and you. not your own home. However, if you have bought your own home, it's arguably a liability or an asset. It is going up in value. There is pro. I would never poo-poo someone that did that. No. But I would recommend that you rent where you live, and you buy investment properties that you that you get yourself educated. That give you a very good. Because so, like you said before, <coughs> so many people think they've got a good deal just because it's a property. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, I buy a property. <laughs> buy something. It's going to give you a good return on investment. And then rent where you live and rent wherever the hell you want to live and move around and enjoy uh, life. I completely agree with that. I completely agree with that. Um, the one thing I will finalize and add, leave at the end is when people are buying the home, they're buying with, with um, feelings. Yeah. So they don't actually care if it's an asset or a liability. They're buying with feelings at that point. So. And on that bombshell, it's now time for this. Okay, so in the news this week, um, an article on BBC News, actually, uh, this new website that's trying to help renters fight rogue landlords. Cool. So it's called um, Marks Out of Ten, let's see. <laughs> that's uh, funny. A website that allows renters to rate their past landlords. Founder Ben Yarrow was moving out of his flat when he received an email saying, I'll be glad to see the back of you. He was he he had complained after his then girlfriend was forced to throw away hundreds of pounds worth of clothes when they went mouldy because of a poorly ventilated built-in wardrobe. So the couple felt a little more aggrieved when the landlord began quibbling over a missing three pound bed cover. It was then that Ben tried to find a website where he could leave a review for the landlord. While there were sites people could complain about bad, bad landlords, Ben felt there wasn't anything that provided a constructive feedback and useful information for tenants. And for that reason, he says the website is about promoting good landlords, letting agents, and just as much about good landlords as it is about bad landlords. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so basically, yeah, marks out of tenancy. It's a, it's an online website. So I, I mean, I would hate to end up on there. Uh, it, I, I love the idea of it. Love it. Um, but. And it's a big but. You're going to find lots of people go on there just because they didn't get their own way with landlords. And because landlords, you've got to understand, landlords are running a business. Uh, we are landlords um, and we do get some random requests. So um, one, of, one of my tenants at the minute, for instance, he's lost his job and he's like eight weeks in arrears. Um, and he's just creating a bit of a problem at the minute. Uh, and and I'm, I can look at it emotionally and say, look, I want to help him out. Or I can look at it as a business and say, no, it's not my problem. You've lost a job. Um, you need to pay your rent because this is a business and we, we pay rent. Um, so we've uh, instructed and we've given him a notification to, to, to get, get this sorted. And if he doesn't, um, if he doesn't, then he's going to be evicted. But no doubt he'll feel that we shouldn't evict him. And then he could go on that website, give a very one-sided um, a very one-sided argument. What, what are you laughing at? Just see you googling my name. Um, he could give a very one-sided argument to why he was evicted, uh, which, as long as I've got recourse to to defend that, then that'll be awesome. But um, so I think it's great as long as we've got recourse for landlords to give their version of the events. Um, and, and yeah, but I also think we should have a website for bad tenants and for marking a tenant out of ten, um, because let's face it, we're all landlords. Tenants sometimes can cause lots of problems. Uh, Tenants can sometimes be incredibly, incredibly unreasonable. Um, and as can landlords. So I think it's a good thing. I'm just checking if I'm on there. Alistair's not on there. What's that red flag that's just come up? 
Oh, no. No, I'm not on that. <laughs> no, I think it's really good. Um, I think it's awesome. Um, look, ultimately, uh, we're good landlords. We don't have any problems with our tenants um, in the sense of we deal with them quickly. Um, but we do have people who don't pay rent now and again, and we just deal with it. So maybe, you could, maybe we could use it. Maybe we could go through and look for the landlords that get a load of hate on there. And we could go, we contact them and go, look, man, everyone Google, hates you. Google, um, do, remember, what's his name? Um, the guy we spoke about, the most hated landlord in the UK, Fergus Wilson. Oh, yeah. Shall I see if he's Let's on there? Let's have a look, see if he's on there. Fergus Wilson. Oh, he's not. Yeah, maybe his company, maybe in the company name, whatever that is, I don't know. But, it's a um, shame. It's, I think it's a great idea, but we should, we should, we should, we should, should have there. one. We should go on there, contact landlords that are hated and say, look, obviously you have a lot of problems with your tenants. Do you want to do a rent to rent? <laughs> I was going to say, it's a good place for leads, isn't it? It's yeah, a good yeah. place for... find all the bad landlords. Yeah. Find all the... Um, I think it's funny, um, but I think it's great. I think it's really good, but we need to have one for tenants. So we can, as landlords, we can report and we can leave feedback about our tenants. Fair play. Um, Maybe you should start one. I ain't got enough time, dude. <laughs> I ain't got enough time. Um, who who was it? Brad Hart will probably do it. I was gonna. I, I was mean, gonna Brad say Hart. Brad Hart. We Brad we Hart. we recommended Brad Hart do an Article Four list a few months ago, and he did, and he created a list which Brilliant. he which he done. So yeah, Brad, there's another idea for you, dude. To get out there, create a a website so we as landlords we can leave feedback on our tenants. Right, this is called Marks at a Tenancy. <laughs> we need to come up with a good name for it for Brad. What we're gonna call it? I don't know, dude. Marks out of tenant. Just, uh, you know. Um, yeah, that'll do. Marks out of tenants, yeah, that'll do. Marks out of tenants. I don't yeah. know, but I think it's a banging idea. What do you think? I like it. I'm just trying to think of a good, a good name for it, but it could take a while, so we'll move on to this. Okay, so it's now time for your questions uh, and our answers. We, um, we usually find questions from the Facebook group. So if you're not part of the group, please do join. It's Property Investors with Samuel Leeds. So first question, uh, from looking at you, it looks like you're in a prison. Are you in a prison? That's from Lee Lowe's. Of course, we are not in a prison. However, we've got to get this done quickly before we get called back for parole. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, next there question. There was a really good question. Just go up, go up a minute. View more comments. Ah, oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. One question. Do you know the answer? <laughs> no, I don't, but it's a very good question we can put out there and maybe somebody can help us with it. So we don't know the answer? No, but it's, it's definitely worth addressing it. All right, okay. So this is the question. We don't know the answer, apparently. I haven't read it yet. But we can have our opinions. Johnny Peters. Uh, one question I didn't ask at the crash course this weekend. What happens if the mortgage company becomes bankrupt? Does my buy-to-let property disappear? I'm assuming you don't mean my buy-to-let property disappears. It's not well, like, as in just like go up and smoke? Well, like, like, the, the company, the company, the mortgage company goes I'm bankrupt. I'm assuming. Like, Where's the house? It's, <laughs> like, it's literally just gone. No, I'm assuming he means... Does the mortgage disappear? If the mortgage lender goes bankrupt, what happens to the mortgage? Um, okay, I'm assuming it just gets transferred onto another mortgage company. Yeah, so I had a, 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 a slight case of this um, with my residential mortgage about seven years ago. Uh, so the lender went into liquidation, but... Coventry Building Society bought the company. They always get bailed out. So they, they? it got bailed the out and it got moved over to Coventry Building Society. Um, so that was, uh, that it didn't affect me, but that was residential. So um, I, I would assume it would be transferred over. Um, I mean, that's a question to fire to a mortgage lender um, or a broker when you're getting your next mortgage. But Does I, my I wouldn't well, let property disappear? I wouldn't worry about <laughs> you coming back to your house one day and it just being a plot of land. And also, like, nothing there. What, do you know what I don't understand the question? It's like, so, so obviously it's what you've got absolutely no control on. Like it's like he's thinking, ah, oh, if I buy all these houses through <laughs> this company and then I make them go bankrupt. <laughs> well, I mean? it happened in two thousand eight. What happened to Mortgage Express? I mean, they had Mortgage Express was a massive mortgage lender in the buy to let world. They, they 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 brokered thousands of mortgages and they went bankrupt overnight. But them houses still exist and the mortgages were still getting paid. They would just be transferred to somebody else who who buys them out. Obviously all the mortgages are underwritten, so um, anyway, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. You can't control it, and they'll just get transferred to someone else. Right, so uh, next, uh, selling my house, and I'm joining your academy. Is that Johnny? See you there, Johnny Peters. That's the same person. Oh, I feel bad taking the mickey out of him now. Um, nah, when you come on the academy, man, we... we we'll we're, stop taking the we'll mickey. We'll stop taking... No. We only start taking the mickey again when you join us on the podcast. Um... Uh, bu- 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 yeah, so we've gone through the prison one. Maybe let's do one more. This is one for you. Here you go. Victor Vass. 
Hey guys, would you consider investing in Scotland? Prices are quite high over here and properties are selling super fast, often way over the HR. Thanks. Is that quite, okay, the question. Um, would I invest in Scotland? You're Absolutely. Scotland. I'll tell you why. Absolutely. Hold on. <coughs> How many properties do you own in Scotland? Zero. But so, so listen to what you say, not what you do. Listen to what I say, yeah, not what I do. Um, <laughs> the reason being, just because I've not got, gone up there, I do it. Uh, the it's reason, hassle, it? it's just, yeah, it's just, it's just because I'm not up there. But anyway, I would do, and I'll tell you why. I've, I've bought, I've bought properties in Scotland for investors of mine. Um, now, what I like about Scotland is all properties have to have a home report before they get listed, so they have to be surveyed. Did you, did you know that? Yes. You told me before. I told you before. And there has to have a bank approved valuation put in that home report. So you know the valuation of them before they're, they're marketed. So it's very, very good for finding below market value deals because you in the home report, it gives you a valuation. Uh, and if, you can very quickly see if you can get a good deal out of it or not. And it gets you can get access to that the whole um, home report beforehand. So you can go through it and assess it. You don't have to wait for the surveys coming through. However, the laws for buying up there are slightly different. Uh, the laws for offering are very slightly different. So that it's not you get much less gazumping up there. So do you know you know what gazumping is when yeah you don't get that up there uh, as much because up there your your word is your bond. You know our Scottish people our word is a bond. Um, so when we say we're going to do something, we generally do it. Um, whereas um, the, the property market in England... The word is our bond. When we say we're going to do something, we kind of do it sometimes. <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, but what <laughs> I mean... Generally, generally what we do What I it, mean so. is down here, <laughs> like you can put offers in and you can literally, the day... Just about to say, I don't want it anymore. <laughs> you can you can just pull out uh, with very little uh, recourse. So what you're saying is so you don't, the Scottish don't, don't pull out. Is that, no, what, is that no, what you're saying? They, they stay all the way into the end. Stay all the way into um, the end. Oh my god! What? Right. Okay. On that note, are we still talking about houses? Yes, we're still talking about houses. Okay. So uh, on that note, um, it's good to buy. Scotland's brilliant for buying investment properties. Um, they do they do sell well as well. There's a really good but, uh, below market value deals a lot around central Scotland as well at the minute. So you just wouldn't want to live there. Invest, but don't rent there. No. Why? You can live there and rent there. It's beautiful. Do you live there? All us Scots, come on, we need to gang up on this, dude. Do, do you live there? I don't live there because I moved to England. You know that. You're just asking pointless, Why? stupid questions. Why did you move to England? We moved to England because <laughs> when I was young, my parents pulled me down here and they said, you've got to come down to England. And I'm like, really? And I was brought down <laughs> kicking and fighting. <laughs> I'm joking. I he love, was like, don't take it. me down there. Give me freedom. <laughs> yeah, I've got my freedom. Right, okay. Brilliant. Let's move on. It's a great place to invest. Um, we you stop doing that? All right, all right, all right. Um, we'll do one, one more. more question. One more. Um, but, 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 let's okay, see. a good one, a good one, Go good on. one. Richard C. Is it C? I don't know. T-S-E. T-C. Richard C. As a company owned property stays on the market till exchange of contracts, is there any way to reduce the risk of somebody putting on a higher offer during the legal stages? Yes, invest in Scotland. Yeah, good point. Um, good Do it in point. Scotland, man. But Victor, it. I agree with you. That is, it's a nightmare. Um, it's not Victor I, anymore. We're on Richard. Richard now. Richard, sorry, man. Um, I agree with you. I, I, te- I do agree. With you. I don't like it. I don't like company purchases. And um, if anyone doesn't know what company purchases, what he means is like repossessions, anything where the bank selling or the mortgage lenders are selling. Um, and what happens with them is <clears throat> they'll, they'll accept an offer, and it will go through legal stages. But literally, somebody could come along and offer a thousand pound more. And they, they, they're, they're likely to accept that offer because they want the highest money they can get for it and they're not in a rush generally to sell it. So yes, a, a company purchase could take, a, it could take three or four fall out of beds before it actually completes. But his question is, is there a way to reduce the risk? So I came up with doing it in Scotland, which is obviously a way. What's your way? There isn't a way. Um, there well, isn't a, a way. A Just put a fair... I don't well, know. There's a will, there's show, a you, show your um, when you're doing it. Okay, when you're putting your offer in, show your commitment uh, and have everything ready so the legal sp- is is quick. Like if they know you're a serious buyer and you're everything's in place, there's a very little chain or no chain at all. Then you're. They, I don't think they look at it as a case of look, this person's going to offer us a thousand pound more. I think they potentially look at it as a, who's in a better position to buy, as well as. So it's not just the money. It could be that somebody might offer more money, but they've got to get a, raise a mortgage, whereas you offer a little bit less money, but you're ready to go. I know who I would want to go for, but again, 
the the rules for this are just very up in the air. Um, they they don't. It depends who you're dealing with on the day. Uh, if they don't need to sell it that quickly, they might not. But all I would do is be ready, be prepared, have everything in place, mortgage in place, cash in place, all your documents in place. Show the whoever's selling it that you're serious and you're ready to complete, and just force a completion as quick as possible. So chase them constantly. Let's get this completed, um, and just not wait. Don't wait for them. I know you're gonna just just be be proactive about it. That's what I would say. And on that note, it is time to end. We'll be back next Saturday at 7pm. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you soon. Hey, guys.